talking to you. Yeah, hang on a sec here. All these little notation notifications popping up. Busy Sunday. Oh, yes. <laughs> we good to go? I'm good to go. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to put up a little picture here. Hopefully everybody can see them. This number one is our brand. We're called Stirs. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, our company brand is stirsbrands.com. This is the product I'm talking about. These, I will get into the details about it in a second. And this is what they look like in real life, but this is the non-branded version, okay? So ultimately when we go to production, they'll actually have our logos on them. So basically uh, to talk about our brand, what we are is STIRS is going to be going to market in the US only initially with what is gonna be premium, on the go, single serve, zero waste, edible soluble coffees, teas, hot chocolates, and so forth going as we scale into the future. Um, the idea of this product is simply that this we're hoping to be one of the truly fully sustainable brands that come to the market. And our objective initially is to focus on a niche audience in the US only of uh, outdoor enthusiasts, which include people who go camping, hiking, backpacking, fishing, and hunting. Um, one of the reasons why is that's a segment where there's literally nowhere to get coffee when you're in the wilderness or out on a daily or weekly adventure, right? So this product here allows you to put it into your cup, put it into your travel mug, put it into your travel French press when at the moment you actually want the coffee. So rather than preparing a coffee in advance where it's possibly sitting in there for one hour, two hours and so forth and constantly cooking itself, this allows you just to travel with the water and you just drop it in, you stir it for three, four seconds, you're good to go. So the one, the one that you just showed a minute ago, that, that's a single serve? Yeah, these are all pre-measured single serves. This one here is a protein powder, so it's a much larger one. Okay. Um, when we get into the actual, yeah, when we get into the coffees, um, those are going to be around 3.3 grams of coffee okay. and much smaller. So yeah. the whole reason we got into this number one, as I mentioned earlier, is about the sustainability side. Mm -hmm. So what this does is when we look at the current marketplace, um, when we talk about Starbucks via instant coffees, or we can be talking about sudden coffee or other brands that are out there, the majority of them are coming or being packaged in what is called a paper stick pack or a wrapper, right? When you're out in the wilderness, once you separate the, you know, you tear it off and you pour it into your coffee or you're into your mug with the water, you're holding this paper wrapper and you got to figure out what to do with it, right? Do I put it in my pocket? Do I throw it on the ground? Do I chuck it in a garbage bag? This here, you drop it in, completely dissolves within three to five seconds. There's, there's nothing to do after the fact. Once you put it in, sustainability, it's not even an issue, okay? Um, the other factor is that our packaging, the retail packaging side of it, is we're going to be putting every single pouch, as we call them, they're called stirs. Um, we're going to be putting 12 in a pack. Our packaging is 100% biodegradable compostable, made from we'll call it from plant waste, food waste materials. It's called Begast be, is the actual name. So what we know now is that no matter where our packaging ends up, in what it, regardless of the environment, it's going to biodegrade quite rapidly. Whereas the majority of packaging right now is recyclable cardboards and papers, which depending on the environment it ends up in, may not biodegrade very quickly. Let me and, ask you, can I ask you Absolutely. Um, so from a go-to-market standpoint, um, right now your plan is uh, retail. No, actually we're gonna be going um, Amazon and our own e-commerce platforms. Okay, so online. Okay, yeah, I'm a firm believer unless there's somebody super interested in our product that I'd like to actually prove out the concept in the actual consumer market first before I approach retailers. What um, stage are you in? No, we're pre-revenue right now. Um, where we are as far as traction, everything is done right now. Our coffee supply is secured. Um, our, what we call pod fill, our pouch filling is secured. Co-packing is secured. Packaging, or what we'll call our sample pack packaging is all secured. Now, what we haven't finalized yet, it's in development right now, is the actual 12 pack, uh, which will hold 12 pouches. Um, we know the concept, but it's just a question of just getting it all finalized and secured with our 3D graphic designers. 
for our production facilities. Any alpha or beta testing done with them yet with users? Um, well, these products, the, the actual, this one here, which is the protein has been in the market now for about two years and it's been quite successful. Um, but what's gonna separate us from the market, what we believe is our ability to expand, okay? When we look at the outdoor space, um, when we talk about coffee, for example, which is what we're going to initially penetrate the market with, I'll say almost 100% of the competition or the competitive marketplace for what we call premium coffees and even mm -hmm. lower tier coffees sell only coffee. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we want to expand and become a total brand where we can get into the coffees, get into the tea, hot chocolate, oatmeal, possibly even into the MCT, which is medium chain triglyceride keto and also CBD infusions. Um, so by doing that, we create a brand and we become known as the, the packaging company rather than the coffee company because we don't want to be known as a coffee company. We want to be known as more of a packaging company. So when you think of a family that's going camping, well, what do you serve the kids? Maybe now we, we have a tool now where you can buy your coffee, you can buy your tea, you can buy the hot chocolate for the kids. And possibly as we scale into the future, we can throw in some very healthy, um, what we'll call fruit flavored powder drinks um, or flavored drinks or flavored beverages. Our components are meant for hot water, cold water. They can go into milk as well. So when you think about an oatmeal, um, we can possibly get into pastas into the future. But where we are today, our primary focus is really on our, our product, which is going to be the premium custom blended instant coffees. So right now we're gonna be going to market with a light roast, medium roast, and a dark roast. And as I probably say within the first six months, then we're gonna introduce the ground coffee. So most Americans um, habitually enjoy their, their good cup of coffee or a great cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's gonna be very important for our investors or even for our brand to be able to scale into that market. Um, the opportunity with this packaging is, is just exponential. Um, where we could possibly go with it when we talk private label, getting into business to business and so forth. Um, but the whole idea is about waste. You, you mentioned the protein's been out there for a couple of years and been successful. Correct. What kind of traction has that had? Um, well, I can say that they've, they've raised a substantial amount of money from some very well-known um, investors. So, they the idea of that is that they're out there on the proteins only. Is, is it it's a, your product, though? Because you said they. No, it's no, not my product. Oh, OK. Yeah, because ultimately, ultimately what happens, Scott, is the film itself is proprietary to the manufacturer of the film. Then you have the pod filling, which is proprietary. Companies like the ones that manufacture or that distribute, manufacture and distribute the proteins, all they're doing is they're putting the actual, they're developing the powder that goes into the film. Right. So we're we're on the same vein. Can be we're developing the coffee, the hot chocolate, the teas and everything else that will go into this film. OK, got it. OK. So right now, like one of our fears when we started this project almost a year ago was would consumers be interested in consuming um, these edible films? Right. And what we found out in, in the majority of our surveys and the most recent one is 98 percent have zero issue with it. Zero. They, I mean, our our recent survey, and it's not a big one, because really, we're testing the market with our, our niche audience of outdoor enthusiasts. But I can say right now that 98% of the ones that we tested have no problem with this film. They're absolutely interested in getting their hands on this product. They want to get their hands on this product. And, and we honestly believe that if we were able to get to the market with our sample packs and prove out the concept further, um, we will definitely grow a major brand here. Okay. All right. We're, we're getting close in time here. So a couple more questions. What, what is it that you're raising? Yeah, right now we're, well, we, on the, on the pitch summary, we put out 150,000, but just yesterday we had, a, you know, another conversation with my team, my CFO and my marketing strategist, and we could go down to a hundred thousand um, dollars. But on the 150,000, we're looking at a 20% equity stake. Um, it could possibly be, you know, a line of credit or a line of credit with equity or possibly a, a convertible note. And use of funds? And the use of funds is going to be a variety of things that will spread across 
um, the proof of concept and validation. It's going to go to marketing and on the other side would be IT fees and professional fees. So when we say, when I say on the validation, we want to bring in the sample packs necessary to prove it out um, to our marketplace. So we want to, right now we're going to be launching a, our landing page in the next, I'd say five days with a, with click funnels, which is going to draw attention to our brand. And we we're hoping to get at least a thousand people to complete a more refined survey about our audience. So we can really zone in on exactly what they want. Um, but having said that, some of the benefits of this is it's 146 million outdoor enthusiasts in the U.S. Now, we're not our intention isn't to get every because that's a very big number. But what we love about this is that the products we're going to be going into are recession proof. The margins on our retail side, our MSRP, are going to be over 78 percent on the wholesale side, over 54 percent. And when we say retail, our goal is to get into the brands like um, Outdoor Bass, REI, Cabela, things of that nature. Um, the thousands and thousands of mom and shop or mom and pop outdoor adventure stores across the U.S. The KO, the COA, campground right. shops across the U.S. Okay. No, I appreciate it. we got to wrap up now. Um, and I can, uh, through the platform, I can get some messages over to you with potentially additional questions. Yep. Perfect. Yep. So we got a pitch deck available for the investors and we're about 98% complete on our business plan. Um, and our goal right now is the traction. I say the traction and momentum is extremely interesting. And by the way, let me just add in. I've also got 10 influencers in that space or across the four spaces of outdoor enthusiasts that are going to be ready or they are ready to take our product to Instagram and Facebook and so forth. And, and they have a reach of around 350,000 uh, followers. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay. Appreciate it, Scott. And good luck with the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.